In this video we will recap the link between the regression assumptions and the properties of OLS estimators. So it's best to make a clear distinction between population and sample. So we're thinking about the situation where in some potentially large population we have observations which means combinations of dependent and explanatory variables for capital N observation. So it could be very large that capital N. And now we, and that will turn out to be the first assumption, we will make the assumption that in the population the dependent variable Y and the explanatory variable X are related in that way with a linear model, a simple linear model. But it also has these error terms and so really in the population we should think there exist these error terms as well. Of course, we will not observe these. So, with that in mind, let's state the first regression assumption. Anyway, we've stated it already. The assumption is that this linear model is the population model. The population regression model is how in the population X and Y are related with each other. Now we take a sample from this population. So basically, through sampling we can see a subset of these population observations but the only thing we see in that sample are the values for y1 and x1. Uh, we will not see that error term and let's say we have a sample of size little n where little n is of course smaller than large n. So our sample size we get some subset of the population observations. So the next two observa uh, sorry, the next two assumptions really relate to this sample. The first or uh, SLR2 is that the, this process of sampling was really a random process. So what we have is a truly random sample from our population. And the uh, third assumption, SLR3, refers in particular to the values of the explanatory variable in our sample, we need to assume that there's some variation in these xi. So we are not all the x's are the same. So there are two further assumptions and altogether um, we will then have the Gauss-Markov assumptions but uh, here's the fourth assumption, that's the zero conditional mean assumption. The uh, expected value for the error term conditional on x is zero, and we also assume that the variance of ui is constant, sigma squared. These are really assumptions about the population error terms, okay? the ones which we cannot see. It will be these assumptions, which are collectively called the Gauss Markov assumptions, which will allow us to deduce properties of the OLS estimators. Now you uh, will possibly remember what the OLS estimators are, or you should certainly, in a uh, simple regression model, simple linear regression models. So beta 1 hat, the estimator is the covariance between yi and xi divided by the variance of xi and the OLS estimator for the intercept is beta naught hat equals y bar minus beta 1 hat times x bar. Right? So these are the estimators. Now remember these are random variables. That's very important. You need to remember that these estimators are random variables. We describe random variables by means of their distributions. So we have a distribution for beta naught hat and a distribution for beta one hat. And let's say, let's just sketch some distributions here. Now it will turn out that one nice property that can be established is that these estimators are unbiased. That means on average, or these distributions are centered around the true but unknown values beta naught and beta one. These are the true but unknown coefficients from our population regression model. Beta naught hat and beta one hat are the OLS estimators. They're random variables by themselves. We cannot see these distributions. They are basically in our mind and they are derived from these assumptions and we'll refer to back what properties we can get in a minute 
from the assumptions. What we actually can see is the sample of data, our blue sample of data. That's what we can see. And once we have this sample, we can actually calculate estimates beta 1 hat and beta naught hat. So we need to be clear that we differentiate between the values which we can calculate on the basis of our sample data, these are the blue versions here, and our random variables, the green versions. Now these blue versions, once we have our data and can calculate them, we call them the OLS estimates. And they are draws, individual draws from these distributions, which of course we cannot see. All we see is that one draw. So if assumptions 1 to 5 hold, then our calculated OLS estimates, beta 1 hat and beta 0 hat, are draws from this, these distributions of our OLS estimators. Right? Imagine you roll a dice and you see a 6, that is one draw from a uniform distribution of all possible values from 1 to 6, but you only see one draw. And that's the same here. Once you have the data, we see one value for the beta naught hat and beta 1 hat, and they are drawn from this distribution. Now, what do we know about this distribution? And that's the important thing, and that's what can be derived from the assumptions. We know that these distributions have the following properties. Firstly, they are, they describe estimators which are what we call unbiased. So on average, if we draw from beta 1 hat, on average, we get a value equal to the unknown estimator beta 1. And the same statement is true for beta naught zero. And we also know that the variance for beta 1 hat, we can calculate according to this formula, sigma squared divided by SSTX. Now, if you remember back of how we did establish unbiasedness and how we derived the variance formula for beta 1 hat, you will remember that we had to rely on the assumptions to get to these results. To get the unbiasedness results, we needed assumptions 1 to 4. Right? The, all of these assumptions were necessary to get the unbiasedness and to calculate the variance, we needed assumptions 1 to 5. Right, so the, And these were, of course, collectively, we called these assumptions the Gauss-Markov assumptions. But for unbiasedness, we all only needed one to four. 